the time of enslavement, darkness and violence. They risked their young lives on their shoulders. They were carrying Poland. Nazywam się Teresa Stankowa z domu Jasińska. My name is Teresa Stankowa, ne Jasińska. I was born on October the 13th, 1929. In my house, we were brought up not by being repeatedly told things, but rather by example. We had role models. As Christmas Eve began, first, we would all stand at attention, singing The First Brigade, the Polish patriotic song. And the nationalists stood together with the followers of Piłsudski. All stood at attention, and everyone sang, and only then could you sit down and start singing Christmas carols. It didn't matter if someone was leaning a bit to the left or right or was a centrist. It was about Poland. It was the one most important thing, fundamental patriotic upbringing. I mean, I wouldn't use the word upbringing. I would rather say life. Back then, it was a normal thing. One talked about the uprising of 1863 in the same way as now you would talk to the younger generation about the Warsaw Uprising. The time gap was more or less the same between that uprising and my youth and childhood as it is now between young people and their attitudes to the Warsaw Uprising. Still, back then, it was such an everyday occurrence. For me, the war started back in 39, even though I was only 10 years old. The war began for me even before those famous words, and so war it is, were said on the radio. However, in my home, where I lived, everyone thought it was a mistake, not war. However, my environment and I were prepared for war at least a year in advance. So yes, there will be war, we thought, but when? And then the time came when the house collapsed, and I was left in a summer dress with sandals, without a roof over my head, not yet believing what happened. And simply put, the people who rushed to the streets had this look in their eyes, as if it was just a drill, a mistake. No, this was not a drill. Soon after, the plane showed up, flying quite low. I am not originally from Warsaw. I was born in Kielce. Well, we saw black crosses on these planes. To this day, I still remember my own scream. The biggest fear was gas. Based on the memories of the previous First World War, this was the scariest weapon. So how could one prepare? Masks were in short supply. There was also a shortage of armaments. Poland was always insufficiently armed, you know. We had to get weapons from the Germans, dig up weapons from 39, construct these weapons ourselves, and steal parts from the armaments factories where Poles worked. But for all of this, we risked death. I had to experience it because I was about 15 years old by then. People were rounded up in the street for nothing, simply because they were Poles. They would be gathered there in the square, in front of the church, and other people were stopped to look at this execution. A lady covered my eyes with her hand. I pushed that hand away. There stood probably six or seven people, and I thought there was a boy my age. Then it turned out that he was about three years older than me. Until the last moment, we had eye contact. At that moment, I lived with him. He was looking at me. I don't know if he was searching or looking for the remnants of his life in me. There was no fear in his eyes. He may have needed another human to be with him at that moment, not to be alone. Can I forget it? I still see those eyes to this day. Such terrible moments mixed with everyday life. During the occupation, we also lived a normal life. We wanted to dress nice, rearranging the same clothes 150 times or patching up three dresses into one. 
walking in clogs. Would anyone understand now what it means to walk in wooden shoes? Not for elegance, but because there were no other options. You still had to carry a stone in your pocket to fix the nails, because they would constantly come out, and the top strap would release. Back then, this was everyday life. We enjoyed dancing. After all, young people are always the same. They want to have their crushes, and they want to have a moment of respite from time to time. It was necessary to dance or fry a whole pile of onions because it was a staple food. Those who could drink moonshine drank moonshine. The youngsters were not allowed to drink moonshine, but we had a record player and danced half the night. And the war was raging outside the window. For example, once, we were enjoying ourselves in a crowd that wasn't supposed to be there. Suddenly, loud, heavy footsteps, soldiers' boots, came from the stairwell. We opened the door, and there are gendarmes. What's going on? The black curtain in the window was not drawn right, showing a sliver of light. They leave, and we all sit down. For a while, the fun stopped. We fix the curtains, glad the gendarmes are gone. In a moment, the fear is gone. An intelligent person adapts to whatever conditions he finds himself in. And maybe so many of us are still alive. Thanks to what we have learned so far. For a while, I was primarily a liaison. Then they transferred me, because I somehow showed maybe a little intelligence, to this so-called small sabotage and small intelligence. There was Operation Tempest, which culminated with the Warsaw Uprising. This was a couple of years of hard work. It was a nationwide mobilization. We couldn't get there from Kielce, but we engaged and distracted the Germans. The Germans were defending access to Warsaw, so in Operation Tempest, it was only possible to organize offensive fighting with the Germans to draw their forces away from the city. But we did not reach Warsaw. After 1945, we had a complicated life. Because part of us realized, a large part of the population realized, that this is not the end of the war, that what came, this so-called liberation, only ends a certain stage. Still, what awaited us, we did not know. As for my family and my relatives, they died in Katyn during the war. They died in concentration camps. My two sisters were executed, shot for our father, whom the Germans did not find at home when they came for him. Since our father was warned and did not go home, it did not occur to him that they would shoot his children. However, what to do next? This was not what we fought for. We have been let down by, actually, by the world. We were sold. Our troops fought everywhere. But in our country, we were the only ones to fight. The homeland for me is the land and the people who live on it. A patriot is any person who performs their duty diligently, regardless of the situation. The hardest thing is to work for the homeland, not selfishly for yourself. Of course, I am a part of my homeland, and I also want to live normally. But to live normally, people next to me must also live normally. And to think as I do, these are patriots. This is hard work. Sometimes I think it's more difficult than military life. Young, free, idealistic. Thanks to them, we live in Poland. In a free Poland. Out of gratitude for Poland. subsidized by the Polish National Foundation.